YouTube, Gold Dizzy here, uh, here to bring you a great video. Uh, but before I get to today's subject at hand, I want to give a quick hello, a quick shout out, if you will, to some YouTubers who are up and coming, and to some YouTubers who have already been around for a while. Uh, I will put a link in that description box over there to each one of these channels that I'm going to discuss. And if you get the time, please uh, watch their stuff, give them some love, give them some hate, you know, whatever. If you like their stuff, let them know it. If you hate their stuff, let them know it. The feedback is very important because it makes us better at what we do. Uh, right off the bat, though, first is Spider486. He's a relatively new guy to YouTube. Please check him out. Uh, Team Rai Rai. <laughs> what can I say about Team Rai Rai that hasn't already been said? He's awesome. He's on blog TV. He's very entertaining. Please check him out. 1YDAL5. Uh, they've been around for quite some time. I've been watching their stuff pretty much since the beginning. Uh, they've got their 100th video coming out pretty soon. See, either they're going to come out today or tomorrow, but make sure you check them out. Mike, WWE, TNA, 3. New guy to YouTube. Check him out. Watch his videos. Give him some good feedback. Let, let us know what we're doing wrong. You know what I'm saying? Talent, 123H. He's been around for a while. Just want to say, hey, what's up, talent? How you doing, man? Uh, Mr. Shizzo5. This guy's very unique at what he does. He wears a Jason Voorhees ho hockey mask over his face whenever he does his videos. It's very cool. It's very entertaining. It's very you. And uh, what's going on, dude? And last, TNA is WWE. Very new guy. He does reviews. Uh, and that's all I can say. He makes videos. Check them out. And uh, if you like them, if you like any of these guys, give them a sub so they can keep going up there in the rankings of the YouTube world. Now, on to today's subject. I'm going to talk about jobbers. Now, to me, jobbers are no longer in the WWE. Or wrestling period, not just the WWE, but TNA as well, and ROH. Now, a lot of you guys are going to be like, hey, Gold Dizzy, <laughs> there are jobbers in wrestling. You know, look at guys like Evan Bourne, or Chavo Guerrero, or Dolph Ziggler, or MVP, whoever you want to put in that, that name, you know, whoever you want to put in that list. But, to me, none of those guys are real jobbers. Because when I was growing up watching wrestling back in the 80s and the 90s, a jobber was a wrestler who was number one, not known at all. Number two, lost every single match. He might have got a win every blue moon, but that was very rare, very few and far between. And number three, his primary purpose, his primary purpose was to always make the other guy look good. Now. There are two primary jobbers that I grew up watching back in the day. The first one is a guy by the name of Barry Horowitz. Uh, he also went by this name called Barry Horrible Wits, which is what a lot of the guys used to call him back in the day because he always lost. Uh, Barry Horowitz, let me try to paint a picture for you guys so you guys can kind of maybe remember who this guy was for you older wrestling fans. He had the long, greasy, black, curly hair with the big, full beard. And he had the rain jacket on that had a handprint on his back because he was always giving himself a pat on the back. You know, that was his gimmick. He would go in there, get his ass kicked, he'd go home, and that was his day. Now, the second and probably most famous jobber of them all is Steve Lombardi, better known to you guys as the Brooklyn Brawler. Now, this guy, Steve Lombardi, he didn't start that way as a jobber. He actually you know, has been with the WWF for many years. Well, anyways, he kind of got, a, I guess, a promotion, you could say, uh, to where uh, his primary job was to wrestle all of the guys that were coming in, that they were trying to turn into future superstars. He would wrestle those guys and basically uh, give a critique after the match to Vince McMahon or whoever he had to give a critique to, and he would let them know, if those guys had what it took to be a superstar. So yeah, he always lost his match, but he was actually, you know, critiquing these guys. That was his primary job. Yes. Would you call uh, 
Steve Lombardi a jobber? Of course, because that's what he did. But uh, those are the two main jobbers that I grew up watching. Now, nowadays, you don't have those no-name wrestlers anymore. I mean, you hardly ever see them. Now, ECW, they do bring in new talent. And uh, I, you could call those guys jobbers at first because uh, their primary goal is to come in, they face the better-known wrestlers, and they lose. But then sooner or later, they're uh, either turned into superstars or they're sent home. So I guess in a way, those guys could be considered jobbers. But the real jobbers are just not there anymore. I remember watching wrestling back in the day. There was always, always jobbers. You know, you see Sting going up against this no-name jabroni. Sting would go in there, kick some ass, have you could just tell he was having fun doing what he was doing because, you know, it was fun back then. And I'm sure it's still fun now. But you know, you would see people like uh, Sting, Ric Flair, all those guys. Even people like Hulk Hogan and Ultimate Warrior. Uh, all those guys would just take on no names. And then they would, you know, also, jobbers are used for practice for the other guys, you know. They would come in, uh, a person like, you know, whoever, whoever you want to throw in that, 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 that list, like Jake the Snake or uh, Ric Flair, like I just said. They would come in and they would wrestle this no-name guy. And they would not only win a match, but they would get to hone their skill, so to speak. Uh, so job, to me, jobbers are very essential because they they help the other stars become better at what they do, and they help develop, you know, everything: the skills, their ring psychology, their overall wrestling ability, and you know what? Jobbers are also there to absorb all the losses. You got guys like Evan Bourne and MVP and Jack Swagger and Dolph Ziggler always losing nowadays. And it's not fair to those guys and it's not fair to their fans uh, to have to go in there and lose all the time. It's just not fair. And you know, it's, it's terrible that, that nowadays people that are that they're really good, like MVP and Evan Bourne, people who have so much potential and so much talent to just you know, go in there and see them lose to somebody. It shouldn't happen. I'm not saying that they should win all the time. No, not every wrestler should win every single match they have. But they should have a lot more wins in the win column and a lot less loses, or losses, I should say, loses, losses in the loss column. Uh, but if you had jobbers, it would take care of all that. You know, take some of those guys that are trying to break out in the wrestling, bring them on Raw, bring them on SmackDown. Uh, let them be on the first match or the second match of the night, you know? And uh, let them come in and get their ass beat by somebody like Evan Bourne or MVP. So that way, the fans can have something to cheer about. And, and the wrestlers that are always losing, that are well-established like MVP and Evan Bourne, can have something to cheer about. Because I'm sure they're tired of always losing. But, you know, sometimes you know, people like Evan Bourne are really good at making the other person look good. So I can kind of see why the WWE uses him like that. But that's pretty much all I wanted to talk about. The importance of jobbers in wrestling. And TNA and WWE, you know, all, all, all across the board. We need to bring these jobbers back so that our more well-established stars can't stop losing. Because I'm tired of seeing it, guys. I'm sure you guys are too. But that's it for now. Gold Dizzy's out. Peace out. <laughs>